a day in the life of a dating disaster. <laughs> it all started when I swiped right on Ben's Bumble profile. He looked handsome and healthy, and he worked for a nonprofit, enjoyed hiking on the weekends, and was in my desired age range. Bingo. We chatted online for a few days about the usual subjects. Where are you from? What do you do for fun? What's your family like? We both liked camping, traveling, and even binge-watching Game of Thrones. He and I seemed like we had a lot in common. We planned to meet on Thursday evening at Obi Noodle House in Ocean Beach, a casual place, not too fancy, and I thought it would be perfect for a first date. When Thursday evening rolled around, I was a bit nervous about my date. One bad courtship after another had really taken a toll on my confidence. There had been Richard, who ghosted me after six good dates. There had been Seth, who wanted me to be his girlfriend, who didn't want me to be his girlfriend, but wanted all the benefits. And of course, Ryan, who talked about our future together, but was still in love with his ex-girlfriend and was actively trying to get back with her. These were just a few disappointing dating experiences I'd had in the past couple of years, and I was really hoping that tonight's date was going to lead into something good and be the turning point in my cursed dating life. I stood in front of the bathroom mirror while getting ready for my date. The sweet smell of ocean breeze came walking through my window and filled my nostrils with sweet, or sweet fresh air. I looked at myself in the mirror while applying my makeup and thought to myself, this date has got to go well. Make it work, Sierra. My eyes were getting a little teary thinking about all the bullshit I had dealt with in the past couple years. I had to convince myself that I was just finding the wrong guys. And it wasn't me who was the problem. I'm educated, I have a career, I support myself, and I'm not crazy. <laughs> Maybe I just had an asshole magnet that happened to repel gentlemen all at the same time. <laughs> I lived in walking distance to Opie Noodle House, so I took a nice stroll down Abbott Street in the golden hours of the evening. The sun was still out and warmed my bare shoulders while I shoulders, which calmed my nerves while I walked. I arrived at Obi Noodle House about 10 minutes later, and Ben showed up not two minutes after me. He had black, oversized sunglasses on and pasty white skin that looked lathered in lotion. He wore a salmon-colored v-neck shirt and tight black jeans, which created a muffin top effect at the union of the two garments. <laughs> I thought to myself, don't be judgmental, Sierra. He's a nice guy. We shook hands casually. I noticed his was quite, quite clammy. As I pulled my hand away from his, I immediately wiped my hand off slightly on my newly laundered jeans. Ben took off his large sunglasses to re reveal his dull blue eyes, which took me by surprise. I had only seen Ben on his own online profile, and he seemed a bit older than his age listed in the pictures he had up. I smiled and brushed off the thought of him being possibly 15 years my senior. Hmm, I thought, maybe he's just had a rough week. Uh, maybe it's just making him a little older than he actually was. We talked to the hostess and got seated at a nice table since the weather was nice and, and beautiful and cooling off from a nice summer, hot summer day. He seemed very personable and I felt oddly comfortable around him for a first date. He laughed at my jokes and was extremely complimentary, which did wonders for my confidence. After, after about an hour, we had a couple drinks each, some delicious chicken wings and some side ground fried rice. I felt as though our date was winding down. He, on the other hand, seemed to think that the party had just begun. He ordered more drinks, two at a time, for himself. <laughs> I giggled awkwardly with wide eyes and ordered another beer. The conversation continued as we shared travel stories and embarrassing high school dramas. He then mentioned that he had had a, a bad car accident a few months before and said his shoulder hurt and was bothering him. My first thought was, how on earth does this man have any pain in his body with the amount of alcohol he <laughs> Before I could finish my thoughts, he pulled out two oval pills from his pocket and popped them in his mouth with a gulp from his old fashioned. He kicked his head back as he swallowed both pills. Vitamins? I asked. <laughs> no, Oxycontin, he said in a matter of fact kind of way. My eyes widened in disbelief and cringed slightly at thought of being a, him being a possible pill popper. Oh, I said, aren't you not supposed to mix alcohol with prescription pain meds? Nah, I do it all the time, he scoffed. At this point, the red flags were waving around in my head. I am no angel, but on a first date, I think you should at least 
seem well behaved. <laughs> my father's voice popped in my head and said, no, 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 this guy is bad news. Abort. Abort. I tried to hide my dismay and continued our conversation. After all, I was a bit tipsy at this point and my voice of reason had definitely gone to bed. After another 20 minutes or so, I noticed his eyes glazing over a little more than they ha already had been. Want to get out of here? He grumbled. Uh, sure. Where were you thinking? I said innocently. How about a real bar? He stated. <laughs> I looked at him and smiled while the waitress dropped off our bill. Ben grabbed the check and graciously pulled out his wallet to pay. I was relieved because uh, Ben had racked up quite the nice tab with his expensive whiskey drinks and uh, had helped himself to my dish after he had scarfed his down. <laughs> I suggested we go to Mother's Saloon down the street. He agreed as he signed the receipt, which I noticed was lacking quite a tip. I took a deep breath as we walked out of OB Noodle House towards the bar and I thought to myself that I should probably just have fun and enjoy the night, even though Ben wasn't turning out, to guy, turning out to be the guy that I had hoped for. We walked into Mother's Saloon about 15 minutes later and were welcomed by a perky waitress with a toothy smile. It was a casual place, smelled of popcorn, stale beer, and chili cheese fries. Ben and I found a nice table near the window and scanned over the draft list. Shots? He asked. Uh, sure. Tequila, please? I said hesitantly while thinking that tequila was probably a bad idea at this point, but my slightly tipsy brain shrugged off those negative thoughts uh, in hopes of keeping a nice buzz. Ben waved down a waitress and ordered us two Patron shots and two beers to wash the shots down. I thought in my head, geez, this night is escalating quickly. At this rate, he was going to be blacked out soon, and I was going to be shoving him gently into an Uber. I noticed that he started to slur his words as he told me a heartfelt story about getting skin cancer as a teen and having to stay out of the sun from then on. Though, I recall his profile saying he enjoyed the great outdoors and being outside as much as possible. Hmm. Is this guy lying to me? Or maybe he's just embarrassed about his skin and wants to be able to go out in the sun more, I thought to myself, trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. His skin was extremely pasty, especially for someone living in San Diego. But I tried not to have such harsh thoughts about him. This state was going downhill quickly, and I had to make it out of this night unscathed for my own sanity. He interrupted his own story to order more Patron shots, a couple more beers, and buffalo wings. I wasn't hungry at all, and I couldn't imagine trying to fit any more liquid into my belly, let alone the food. Ben's wings arrived about ten minutes later, and he dove in. He got about halfway through his third wing when he excused himself to the restroom. I watched as he struggled to his feet and made his way to the men's restroom. His shirt was riding up from behind and revealing a lower back bulge, which was less than impressive. <laughs> Luckily, he must have felt a slight breeze on his exposed skin as he uh, quickly yanked up on his pants, which resulted in at least covering his butt cleavage. <laughs> Yeesh, I thought. Is he even attracted to this guy? Or was it the tequila? What, what am I doing? Fifteen minutes passed, and I started to wonder if he had fallen in the toilet or possibly just fell asleep perched on the pooper. <laughs> I asked the bouncer if he'd be gracious enough to check the restroom for my date. He entered the men's restroom while I, was, I stood there pondering where Ben could have run off to. Maybe he was just outside taking a call. So I poked my head outside the front doors of the bar and scanned the parking lot. Nope, no Ben. The bouncer reemerged from the bathroom and shook his head. Sorry, hon. Bathroom's clear, he said. I thanked him and wallowed back to my table. I thought to myself, what the fuck, Sierra? You were trying too hard to make this work, when obviously it wasn't going to. You knew you were a person in the dating world. I picked up my phone and texted Ben. Uh, did you leave? You could have told me if you weren't interested. I, I wouldn't have been offended. No answer. I set my phone back on the table and thought how, about how annoyed I was at this point. I had never been stood up before, let alone left at a bar on a date. That was a new low. The waitress asked if there was anything else I needed. I think he just left me here. This was our first date, I said. She looked at me with sympathetic eyes and reassured me that he didn't look so hot. <laughs> Maybe he left because he didn't feel well. I appreciated her positive outlook, but I had a feeling that my date had seriously ditched me. Before I could recover from my critical thoughts, the waitress added, Oh, and he definitely left you in the tab. <laughs> Crap, I thought. Ben had ordered all the drinks and the wings, so I'd totally forgotten about the tab. 
The waitress cautiously handed me the bill, face down, which I knew was a bad sign. <laughs> I reluctantly flipped the bill over and squeezed my eyes together, just so it didn't seem so real. Four Patron Silver Shots, $40. Four Draft Beers, $28. Buffalo Wings, $14. Tax, eight. Total, 90. Being dished on a date and left at the tab, priceless. <laughs> Ugh. Now this was the new low. I had not planned to spend that much money, especially on a guy like Ben, who turned out to be another asshole in my disastrous dating life. I snagged my wallet out of my purse and smacked my debit card down dramatically. The server came by, picked up my payment, and asked if I was going to eat the wings. I reluctantly asked for a to-go box and thought, maybe I could make some bugs night better by giving them some leftovers. I collected my things and slumped out of my stool while trying to muster the last bits of dignity I had left. I wandered half-drunk home from the disastrous state with no bum in sight to gift the bad juju wings to. I chucked the wings into the dumpster in the back of my apartment complex and hurried to bed without washing my face or removing my contact lenses. I just wanted this night to be over. Weeks passed without word from Ben. I tried to forget about the experience until one afternoon my phone dinged. I pulled my phone out of my back pocket and examined the screen. It was a text from Ben. No way, I thought. Maybe the poor guy's trying to apologize for his horrible behavior. I checked the text and gasped in horror. Wanna fuck? <laughs> 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 I recoiled from my phone in disgust. What the hell was this guy thinking? Uh, that's solid no for me. <laughs> well, it should be a solid yes. Do you even know who you're texting right now? Uh, yeah, why? Because the last time you saw me, you left me at Mother's with the fucking tab. Well, I think you do. Who gives a fuck? You left me with no warning and a $90 tab of beer shots and wings that you ordered. I didn't order any shots. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, you did. You ordered four Patron shots. Two for me, two for you. I had the receipt. I don't know what you're freaking out about. <laughs> Does this honestly work for anybody? <laughs> I can't wrap my head around what the dating world has turned into. Have men just decided not to be gentlemanly? Have they decided to be assholes? I just want a man who has poop and knows how to treat a woman. I want a man who is honest and doesn't have to lie about himself on a dating app. And I definitely want a man who would never dream of leaving their date at the bar with a $90 tab. Ben. You ditched me on our date. You were a complete and utter prick. I don't want you to ever contact me again. So, you don't? What's up? 